plan is to try and get it out here somewhere. It's leaning like really hard. So that's why I didn't just pour the back to it. Because if you pour the back to it, you're just at the mercy of what's going on on the stump and all that horse crap, right? So, notice how I didn't swear? Geez, I'm hanging on strong. Two years, no swearing. Don't go looking for swear words now. All cut up here, like right cut up. Nice clean hinge. The bore cut, guys, I've done lots of them. You guys have seen lots of bore cuts. Everybody's seen bore cuts. It's just like a freaking, uh, like that's why I don't put a ton of material up anymore. Like uh, how many speed line videos can you watch? And how many straight up and down videos, tree videos can you watch? You know, so I try and bring you guys different, different content now. I mean, there's so much content on YouTube and the internet that it, it, it's great. And, and, and it's awesome actually. It's such a learning tool, but I don't, to me, uh, uh, you know, just a straight up and down, uh, you know, whatever. It's just not, I'm just trying to get different stuff for you now. Maybe, maybe touching on a little bit of maybe learning stuff or whatever, if you want to call it that. Uh, but here was, I think the bore cut is a great thing. If somebody stumbles across the channel, some young tree guy, there's one of my stumps from quite a while ago. That was, that was a crazy job, that one. But anyways, I mean, here's the here it is. It, it it there. It's got root rot. You can see it. It's in there. So if I had just started pouring myself in the back, even though it's leaning in there, that's great. We think it's leaning. Well, that's wonderful. But what happens if the stump is all rotten and it starts to leave? Do you know what I mean? It starts going. You're like, well, that's not exactly where I, you know what I mean. Where I want it, and you're in a bit of bit of a problem. So that thing actually went exactly where we wanted it because we put our undercut in there. We cut our hinge up. Our intended direction right there came all the way out to about right there and just popped it at the back and it was pop goes the weasel and that's what happens. Pop goes the weasel. Right oh scotally dodly hodly row. And then you get an axe. Hey. HB gave me an axe. Holtz Holtz Brook gave me an axe. You guys saw it. I, I did a little thing on it. Look how beautiful it is. Look at friends. This thing's quite nice. It's not a wood split an axe. But you could chop trees down with it. It's got a real sharp edge on it. I'll do a little review on it. They didn't ask me to, but I'll do one anyways. I'll beat it up for a while and get to know it, and then I'll do a little be fun. Okay, so I decided I'd bring you that. Have an awesome day. Spread love. The story of Halt's Brook. Craftsmanship with tradition. Halt's Brook. Halt's Brook was originally founded in 1697 in the Halta Valley in southeastern Sweden. Forging by hand began with nails for shipbuilding and making iron bars. Later became the forging of metal, sheets, anchor chains, and castings, followed by hand tools such as axes and spades used by farmers in the regions for work in the forests and in the fields. By 1870, axes had become a major part of Halt's brook production. 1870. Hmm. The then owner, an iron master named Eklund, brought two new axe forging machines in 1877 to meet the demand. The end of the 19th century was a turbulent period in Sweden. The Industrial Revolution brought changes across Europe as a result of major developments in all facets of society. More energy was needed. The increased importance of forestry and the cutting down of trees created the need for many more axes. Today, Haltsbrook is a combination of the new and the old, but our basic culture has not changed over the years. The striving of each individual blacksmith is to always do his very best while relying on a time-honored tradition has resulted in Haltsbrook's axes being famous throughout the world and yes they are they're famous throughout the world you're darn right they are hb make a one 
heck of an axe. HB. I had an Arvika, and oh man, I love the Arvikas. Now we, we go into this. So isn't that a neat little story? So friends, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Halt Sprooks man through and through. I've been running, a, I ran the same Arvika for 20 years and the handle broke and it was my fault. <laughs> I mean, that the wood was old. I, I'll be honest, I didn't condition it. I was using it and then it would sit. I think I did condition it a few times, but I didn't do it every six months or every year like I do now. You know what I mean? So that was partially my fault. But what, what an axe. What an axe, the Arvika. It's amazing. So, anyhow, HB, I want to thank you again, Haltz and Brook, Haltz Brook. Thank you so much for the little kisa. It's very nice. And uh, I look forward to actually uh, giving it a go. Uh, and it's got a heck of an edge on it. I probably will cut something down with it. I bet you that'll flick around pretty nice. Hand forge, beautiful little axe. I love the insignia. I've always liked the HB insignia. By the way, uh, James, I've got some old HB heads coming and I'm going to uh, do a few restoration projects. So I look forward to it. So hopefully we can hook up together on some handles. So Holtz and Brook, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.